Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids, and I am delighted to finally be able to bring you a video I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time, which is on Arix, one of the free login legendary champions that you are guaranteed to get just by playing the game for long enough, and one of the most criminally underrated champions in this entire game. She is absolutely phenomenal and very viable, even late game, even end game. I'm going to show you that today, what she can do for you. Quickly looking at her kit, her A1 is an AoE attack that her damage is based on HP, goes up to a 35% chance to remove a buff from each target as well. Decent utility, not the best chance to proc it, but she does have counter attack elsewhere. Uh, Thorn Shale Malison, three turn cooldown when booked, AoE attack. This hits a good bit harder, like I think it's about 70% harder than her A1. It's a pretty decent smack. The damage based on HP again, with a 50 booking to a 75% chance of putting a stun for one turn, and then transferring a random debuff from this champion to targets that receive stun debuffs from this skill. Her A3, Warped Guidance, three turn cooldown, puts ally protection on all allies, except this champion for two turns, and puts counter attack on this champion for two turns. So helping to keep your team alive. And if she gets hit, she starts counterattacking with this AoE A1. And then a really strong passive, Cynical, with two different effects. Number one, fills this champion's turn meter by 5% each time an ally inflicts a critical hit. This does work with her own attacks, right? So if she does her A1 and she crits four enemies, she's gonna come in and get she's gonna get 20% turn meter, which is hilarious. Also heals this champion by 5% of their max HP each time an enemy inflicts a critical hit. This is a ton of healing in Arena, right? If if an enemy comes in, their AoE nuker nukes your team and they crit all four of your team, she heals for 20%. Uh, one of my favorite things is when you fight a Leorius in Arena and he does his double hitter, she's going to heal for 40% of her max HP. Uh, so all that stuff comes together and makes her really powerful. What I want to do, first of all, I was recording yesterday. I've been running a whole bunch. Actually, let me pause it real fast. Let me show you this. I've been using Arix a bunch in Live Arena. I'll show you how I've built her after that. But I've really been, been. we got a couple of losses here, unfortunately, but we've won here with Arix, won here with Arix, won here, we've won here, we've won here, etc. And, you know, we're winning against, you know, CP Rotos, five-star wake, like with Awakenings, Candrophon, uh, etc. Double Duchess, you know, all of this. Um, we're winning against pretty legit teams. We're losing against some pretty legit teams as well. But Arix is doing some work. Let me show you one of these fights. This is actually against uh, Josh, Josh you are, uh, or Joshua, who actually jumped into my Discord after. I was like, yo, cool team, man. I enjoyed fighting against you, which was really nice of him. Uh, so yeah, he enjoyed the team. I hope that you'll enjoy it as well. We're watching this on one and a half times speed, so we get through a bit quicker. So he's gone in. Pretty straightforward first two picks, really. He's got Duchess and Sifi, both awakened. Luckily, his Duchess does not have uh, Polymorph. He's a Duchess for Hydra with that Miracle Heal. But we're going in. We've got Candrophon. Um, we've got Ultimate Death Knight. We've got Pythion. One of the fun things about this trio or this five-man group that I'm putting together, uh, the Ultimate Death Knight spot is pretty flexible. But I'm using Pythion, who's a recent fusion. Ultimate Death Knight, the flexible one. Uh, sometimes I use Uko instead. Uko a fusion. Ultimate Death Knight was a promotion, login promotion champion. Candrophon, previous guaranteed champion. Arix. Uh, is coming in as um, our, our login legendary. And then we had a guaranteed for Elva as well. So we've got two guaranteed champions, basically two login champions and a fusion here in this team. And we're able to go up against, you know, a Sifi Duchess Car uh, Cardial here. And we're able to put up a good show, which is, I think, pretty cool. So we're locking in Arix later in the draft. Uh, I have had Arix banned once, but people generally don't ban Arix. I think people don't even know what Arix does. What she is doing for us here, two things. Number one, lots of damage, especially AoE damage. Well, entirely AoE damage. And number two, it's a Roto, so really no surprise. Number two, um, she also helps her team to stay alive by bringing that ally protection for the team. And she's pretty tanky with uh, her, um, by coming in with this. So he's banned Ultimate Death Knight. I actually banned his Duchess. I was thinking we'll remove the increased attack, which is going to make the Roto scarier. We'll remove another Reviver just to make sure that we can actually get some kills. Arex, her damage is, is pretty good, but it's not absolutely insane. So if she is your only damage dealer, you're going to struggle a little bit. She is much stronger, in my opinion. Um, you, can, you can pick two damage dealers and have her be the backup. But look at this. 
Arix just got absolutely slammed, but she did not die. She didn't die. Why? Because, well, she's a HP-based damage dealer, right? You build up her HP to make her hit harder. Well, that also makes her way, way tankier. And I do have her, to be fair, in two reaction, which is how that she's uh, actually managing to live here. She is a HP-based damage dealer. That is how she gets away with things. Rotos, unfortunately, is pretty good against her because he can steal her max HP. Um, and she's just going to fill that up pretty quickly for him. So she's going to like that. Let's see what he's going to do here. He's actually gone in with his A1. He's waiting. Uh, and we're just waiting stuff out here with this team. <laughs> we're just waiting out his buffs. We're seeing what we can do. So Eric, she's going to come in. And actually here, we're, we're able to manual it because it's live arena. We're able to put up, which she does do by default, I believe. She does this skill by default. We're able to put up ally protection. So now we've got ally protection. Everyone else is taking half damage, right? So when Kandrafon comes in and nukes, everyone's taking half damage. We don't really have to worry too much. Uh, ooh, this is a tough decision. Do we buff up? I actually decide I'm going to buff up with Kandrafon. They're a very good combo together. Kandrafon with his passive, with the ally protection, he should survive just fine. And then we're going to have the Arix nukes plus the Kandrafon nukes. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty powerful combo. Bam, here he goes in. Look at that. There, Kandrafon, he did his big nuke. Our Kandrafon, without ally protection from Arix right there, he would have died, no question. And our two nukers would have been very low as well. Arix, and you can see her counterattack did some, did some work as well, right? That was her counterattack, pr I'm pretty sure. Um, it's doing some work. Here she comes in. Kaboom, look at that. With her nuke, not too bad. We've slammed them down. Uh, he's almost taken out Elva. That was pretty close. Again, the ally protection kept her alive, just barely. He's going to revive here, but now my Kandrafon, my second nuker, comes in. Kaboom. And down they go. Pretty slick, right? Pretty cool. If we go back there, you can see the, the damage. The damage breakdown, right? Kandrafon, 140,000. The two-star awakening Kandrafon. Arix with no awakenings, 168,000 damage, which is pretty nuts. But uh, yeah, I recorded most of the fights yesterday, so we had some. I picked Nishak in one of them, which was a mistake. But just to give you some ideas of like Arix and some of these other fights as well. So here we go against like a nuker team. You can see here against a nuker team as well. Um, let me speed it up even more. But like you sort of get the gist of what she can do. She's helping you stay alive, but she can also smack. So we'll see here against these guys. We go for the smack. She obviously wipes out their whole team, <laughs> right? Wipes out their whole team. And then we're able to come in and actually take him down, which was pretty fun. Um, here we're up against Magnar. Well, let's actually talk about this while you watch this fight. Arix versus Magnar. What do they both do? They are both HP-based damage dealers, which means that you can build them to be tanky, which for me is such a huge thing for Live Arena. It's very, very difficult to keep squishy damage dealers alive. So having these tanky damage dealers like Arix, Magnar, defense-based damage dealers as well, for me... I found those to be super valuable, and I'm a massive fan of them. Here she goes with her nuke. It's a pretty decent nuke. They have ally protection out with the Krisk. We follow up, and the Krisk actually goes down. Now ally protection is down. Much better spot. Um, that is what Arix does, which is so valuable. Now her versus Magnar, right? <laughs> he actually kills himself, which was hilarious. That was very funny. The Magnar damage. He had to try, but he wasn't able to get the kill because the Arix protection. Then her counterattack finished them off. Um, yeah, look. It's so good. Magnar does hit harder up front. Not by a crazy amount, but he does hit harder. Maybe, I think maybe 20, 25% harder, something like that. Magnar will do more damage with his big nuke, with percussive pound. This will do more damage. Um, they are different affinities, though. That does have an effect. Uh, and Magnar's single target nuke with Fan the Flames is, is decent as well. Look, Magnar's not a crazy damage either, but he's very solid. I think for a lot of you watching, before you get Arix, Magnar, if you get him, hopefully you will get him pretty early on in your raid career. It's going to be like your go-to nuker for Live Arena because, again, he's tanky and he still hits really, really, really hard. Arix, in comparison, what she brings is three big different things. Number one, she's legendary, so she's got better stats overall, right? She's going to scale better than he will just off of her stats. Um, number two, the other thing she brings in her toolkit she doesn't hit quite as hard, but she puts out consistent AoE damage with her A1. So she'll do more damage overall. Her upfront burst, Thornchail Malison, not as bursty as Percussive Pound, 
but her consistent AoE damage is going to actually add up to a lot. Um, and on top of that, she also has got a good chance to stun, especially their damage dealers, strip off some buffs. And then the big thing of counterattack, ally protection, all of the turn meter, all the self-healing, all of that utility in her kit is much better than Magnar. And number three, blessings. Because she's legendary, the legendary blessings are way better than the other ones. What blessings are by running on her? I don't have any blessings right now. I'm getting a little distracted because my puppy is barking like mad in the background. Blessings for her. I think there's three big options. I think at low tier blessings, Polymorph is going to be the best one, right? That small chance to sheep can just completely mess up the enemy team. And that bonus defense is going to be really good to help her stay alive. She's going to have a ton of HP. So it's going to really help her to work. Uh, number two that you could run. I actually think that Life Harvest at higher ranks could be a go-to. It's going to give her a bunch of HP and some resistance. And it's going to start destroying enemy max HP when they're revived and filling her turn meter. Right, which means that once you start killing the enemy, when they start reviving, she's going to get turn meter boosted even more. And then because they're coming back squishier, she's easily going to finish them off with either of her AoEs. I think that could be a very cool combo. And yeah, it could be a great way to get life harvest into your team. And the resistance on her is quite nice. I think the other option I'd be leaning towards would probably be Ward of the Fallen. It's going to give her HP and critical damage. This is going to make her hit the hardest. And it's also going to give her bone armor. I think particularly at six star awakened is when this becomes pretty good. You're going to start with three bone armors, which are going to give you 30% damage reduction each. And then uh, whenever your allies are dead, she's going to do bonus damage equal to the number of dead allies. Uh, and she's going to be procking that AOE. I don't think it's going to be much bonus damage. It's just going to make her much tankier, help her to survive and, and do the work. So that's sort of what I'm looking at there. How did I build her then for this video? So for this type of build, I think there's a couple of ways, right? I've put her in lethal. We're ignoring 25% enemy defense. You can use Savage. You can use um, uh, the Forge Pass set. What's it called? Instinct, I think. You can use that. Uh, and what I'm looking for is basically gear with crit rate, crit damage, HP percent, speed. Those are the big things here. HP percent, bit of crit rate. This resistance and attack knock, great. We can improve that. Crit rate, crit damage, speed. We've got a nice pair of gloves here. Crit damage with crit damage, right? Speed, some HP percent and a bit of crit rate. HP percent chest with some crit rate. We'll eventually replace this with a much better one. We've got HP percent boots with HP percent crit rate, crit damage, a bit of speed. Uh, and then I do think it's quite important. Um, she's going to be so much better if you can get her in reaction. It really helps. If you can't, revenge. More chance to counterattack is good. Uh, or just whatever you've got, your best ones. But you're looking for like HP with HP percent defense percent on the ring. Crit damage necklace with HP and maybe some defense or accuracy is fine. And then a HP banner with, you know, HP percent defense percent speed. That's what you're looking for. Put that stuff together. How have I got her built out? I've actually pushed her all the way up to 100,000 HP, uh, 2,700 defense, 161 speed, 100% crit rate, 272% crit damage. We do have 210 accuracy, which should be fine. Like if I, if I look at my nukers, she's got 230 resistance. This is kind of my... my Ballpark, ballpark figure. I say generally 200 accuracy is good, but you can look at your nukers like Rhonda, about 200 resistance. At my Candrophon, about 220 resistance, right? So around about 200 accuracy is going to be loads to actually stun their nukers and potentially buff strip their nukers. So I'm looking for about that, matching what my nukers can do for Arena. Or like I said, ballpark thing. So she's good for, you know, Doom Tower and Dungeons. You know, 200 accuracy is fine. Obviously, you want 350 accuracy for all the Doom Tower hard, but we're not rebuilding her for that. For her masteries, I've put her like this. I've given her a bit of resistance and a bit of resistance to critical damage. I don't really know exactly what matters. Healing her when she kills an enemy. Uh, she's got a lot of health, so it's a nice heal. Less damage from attacks and then a chance to counterattack. I could totally see you going down, like getting more defense, less damage from AoE hits and resurgence, something like that. You could totally go that way instead if you want. And then we've gone a bit of a wonky way down the offense tree. We've skipped bring it down. 6% more damage when attacking targets with higher max HP. I kind of figure with 100,000 HP, she's probably going to be higher HP than almost everyone. <laughs> okay, so not much point in that. So we're going to give her Ruthless Ambush. We're going to give her Cycle of Violence. And I will give her Opportunist. A bit more damage to targets who are stunned. You know, because she does put out the stun. Maybe she stuns them and gets a bunch of turn meter and can finish them off. Maybe. I don't know. I figured it was okay. We are going to get her Methodical, more damage with her A1, more damage when she kills people, and of course Helm Smasher, which is behind me, but I have it, is going to be the most important one. Uh, but that is Arix, which um, 
yeah, I've been really, really impressed by this. Uh, also, I did enjoy this one, this this fight right here. There was a wonky fight. I start recording this one midway through. He picked Elagias, which was really interesting. Uh, and we did go through, and this was a long one, a slow one, because we're getting locked out. One nice thing about both all of these three champions right here, actually, uh, the passive with Elva, but Arix with her AoE A1, even if you're locked out, she can still do some work. So in this case, uh, I thought this was an interesting fight. Arix was the solo damage. We're actually able to win that one, which was quite intriguing. Um, I did, by the way, I did run her in Hydra as well. <laughs> so I did throw her into a Hydra run to see how she would do. Um, and this is the sort of team I'm putting together. Ultimately, I'm probably going to put Michinaki in this spot in this team. He's going to be way better than her. He's going to bring us decrease. Uh, he's going to bring us Hex, decrease attack, and HP burn AOE. So he's bringing us crazy things for this team. But this is Arix. How does she work against PVE content in this arena focused build? And like we go through, we actually skip to the end. We won't watch the whole thing. But here was the damage stats at the end. This is on Hydra Hard. I just ran this right before recording. We did almost 60 million, right? Mother Cybelle in the lead did about 13 million with Brimstone and being boosted by Shamael. You can see Arix, highest damage on the team with 16.4 million. So when it comes to Hydra, uh, she's not absolutely crazy in terms of uh, her damage. It's not going to be absolutely crazy, but it's going to be good. It's going to be consistent, even with this build. And she's going to help your team stay alive by giving them ally protection. She helps your team stay alive. You can actually see right here, right here, this was a problem I ran into with this particular team. If you look through the champions I've got, the only healing I have is Archbishop Penthroy with the four turn cooldown. Um, so I think that Arix, you'd be probably wanting to have Hex on your, uh, not Hex, a Leech. If you have Leech, like if I had Ugo instead of Penthroy, she'd be fine. But I actually found that my Arix was very close to dying most of the time because I had almost no healing to give her. Um, and she doesn't get any healing off of her passive because these enemies basically never crit you, right? Because they're PvE enemies, unlike in Arena, where the nukers are going to crit you constantly and heal her up. Doesn't work here. She also gets absolutely tons of turn meter. You'll see the boost turn meter popping up above her constantly uh, because whenever anyone crits, she gets a bunch of turn meter. So she takes a load of turns as well, which makes it a bit harder to keep her alive, perhaps. So that's something I would consider. And if I was building her just for Hydra, this build does work totally fine. It works great, in fact. It's not the best possible build, though. You could build her in different ways if you were just focusing on Hydra. You could drop all the damage on this champion builder just for control and protection. That would work as well. Um, but I think that this Nuker build is the way to go for Arena. Like I said, I've been doing it. I've been so impressed. I think she's crazy. Brings big damage and also protects your team. And because she's got a, a butt ton of HP and actually really good base defense as well, she doesn't flop over dead. Like someone like Karato here, he's in pretty rubbish gear, but like with 39k HP, 1.7k attack, right? What happens to Karato? He would just die if I brought him in. Whereas Arix comes in way tankier, plus her passive healing her up as well. And she can actually survive and do some work. So there you go champion you may well have in your vault that is actually a sleeper good champion for arena do not sleep on her <laughs> she's a monster i've been loving her thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you all next time goodbye